Hello everyone, today let's talk about graphing square root functions or transformations. And this time we are going to continue to talk about different types of transformations that will affect the shape of the graph. And this one, as you can see, there is a two in front of our square root function. And I already have the parent function for the square root. And what does the two do to that parent function? It's that it's going to multiply the, all the y values that we have by two. And so that means as we plug in the same x values, our y values will be double. And so what really happens is that we are going to have a vertical stretch up the graph. Okay, so let's actually start graphing this one. So we have two times the square root, okay? So you can see that we are going to still have the same x values. And so we are still just going to use those three key points right here. So x value would be zero, the second x value would be one, and then the third x value would be four. Now, what really happened is that if you plug the zero in here, you are still going to get zero. So this one, even though when we multiply by two, but it's not going to change, right? So we still get zero for this, this y value. Now for the second y value, when we plug in the one, we are going to just get one for the parent function, right? But here, when we plug in the one, we are going to get two times the square root of one, which is two. So now we have the two. And for the third point, if we plug in the four, then we are going to get square root of four, which is two, two times two is four. So you can see that we are doubling the y values. And so zero multiplied by two, we get zero. One multiplied by two, we get two. Two multiplied by two, we get four. And so now those are the th three new key points that we have for this function. So now if we plot them, then we are going to get zero, zero. And then we get one, two. So we get this point here. So you can see that the y value is being double. The x value is the same. What about the uh, the third key point? This is four, four. So we look at the four and then go up to four. So that is this point. You can see that again. This is two units, and then now it's four units, right? So we are doubling the y value. So now what happens is that we connect those key points. And then we have the second curve. And this is actually the one that we are trying to graph, right? So that we are finished with the graphing. And as you can see that we are stretching this graph vertically. Okay, so there was still one more thing that we need to finish, which is to find the domain in the range. Okay, regarding the domain in the range, the domain is actually still going to be the same as the parent function is really because um, stretching it vertically does not really affect what values that we plug in, right? Because we, we still have just the two multiplied by the original function. So we are still going to get zero to infinity, okay? As you can see from the graph. What about the range? The range also would still be the same because we're just multiplying all the y values by two. But as you can see that it will still cover starting from zero all the way to, it will just keep going up forever. So it will be uh, going to infinity. So we get zero and then also infinity. And so that's it for this one. And we are going to try another example. Okay, let's continue. This time we have the two inside the square root. So this is really similar to the problem that we were just doing, right? But the two was on the outside. And this time for the two that is on the inside, how does that affect the shape of the graph? Um, this two in here, if it's greater than one, then we have a horizontal compression. And actually, you can also think of that as a vertical stretch by rewriting this as the square root of uh, the square root of two times the square root of x, and you can see that the square root of two is greater than one. So in that case, we still have a vertical stretch, but it's more difficult to graph it that way. And actually, if we think of this as a horizontal compression, then it will be easier. Um, how does that work? Well, first, we just see that because when we have a horizontal compression, then what we're having uh, that is different from before, from the three, key points would be the x values that are different. So assuming that we are still going to get the same y values, okay, so let's say we want to get the same y values, we need to think about what kind of values that we are going to uh, plug into this x here so that we are still going to get the same y values. In this case, this one is quite easy because think about this, we if we still want to get zero, then all we need is to plug in the zero for the x, and we're still getting the same key point over here. So that is zero, zero. So we still have that 
um, at the origin. Now, what about this one? If we want a one, that means we, before we, we just plug in the one and then we are just going to get one, right? But if we want a one here, we actually need to have a one in here. So that means we need a half times the two so that we can get the one. So that means we are going to get the half here. Or you can think of that as 0.5, right? So now what about the next one? The next one, if we still want a two, so that means we need a four in here. If we need a four in here, that means we are going to have to plug in two for the X so that we can get a four in here. So that means we are gonna get a two. So now if you just compare the X values with the original set of key points, we still get zero. So that doesn't really tell us much. But if we look at this one half here and there is a one here, you can see that that one is being what? Being half. And then same thing here for the four is being half. And then you may say, what about the zero? If you multiply the zero by half, then you are still going to get zero. So uh, you can imagine that that's already being done, right? It's being multiplied by half, but you just don't see its effect because it's zero. But the other x values are all being half. And so in this case, you can see that why that would be a horizontal compression because when we actually plot those points on there, let's stop plotting the second point because I already plotted the first one. So now we have one half, so one half is over here, and then the, uh, the y value is one, so we get this point. So see what's going on here? This point, it's at one one for the parent function. Now the x value is being half, so you can imagine that we are compressing the, the graph this way. Is that okay? And so that point goes here. And then what about this one? This one, you have an x value of four and then now it's being half, so we now have the two. So now we have those key points. And it feels like, and I'm using the wrong color here, but uh, yeah, so we just imagine that we use the green one over here. So let's just do that, okay? So <clears throat> you can see that this point goes here and then this point goes here so, so it's being compressed but you're not really moving the graph you're actually just compressing the graph okay so that is for the graph of this function and now one more last step is that we still need to figure out the domain the range and it just happens that they're the same as you can see from the graph because that's really similar to the previous example that you have seen so we have zero to infinity based on the graph and then same thing for the range Okay, so that's it for these two examples, and we are going to do more examples with a mix of different transformations next time. Okay, thank you for watching.